Stephen Mayne, who'll be happier about this, Tiger Woods, his mistresses, or the government? Well, I think Tiger Woods is, you know, three million bucks in front. Uh, if he's just paid out what hundreds of millions in his uh, divorce settlement, then uh, you know he needs to replenish the bank balance. So, uh, I mean, I can't believe his price hasn't fallen. You know, he's only gone down from three and a half to three million when his reputation has been smashed. So, uh, I think the taxpayers have been taken for a ride. Tiger's in the worst form of his career. His reputation is shot. Um, you know. Why would you need to bring him back when last year was so successful and so much has changed since he was here last? Ashley, do we have a right to be cynical about this move? Oh, I think so. Um, it's, uh, it's possibly a little bit galling that we can't even provide an adequate ambulance service in Gippsland, yet the government's hand out, handing out this cash. Um, but isn't there an argument that because of the money that we are investing, the money he will bring back, that... 34 million or yeah, whatever it is can I've go heard, to that ambulance service. I've heard, I've heard of all these studies. I mean, who, who does these studies? I mean, and what and what are they based on? Where's the evidence? I think if the Chris piece, James might uh, do some of these studies. <laughs> Look, the key the key figure to remember here is 35 percent of the people who attended out of the hundred thousand were from from interstate or overseas. So that's all new money coming into the economy. We're all taking day off work, so it's bad for productivity. <laughs> Not a big talk, yeah. <laughs> The, the other thing to remember too is Victoria has consistently outperformed the other states in terms of tourism metrics as well. Um, yesterday we had the International Visitor Survey, uh, Victoria was ahead again and a lot, a lot of that's got to do with major events and increased direct flights into Melbourne. Yeah, unemployment numbers were uh, slightly up as well we've seen too. I mean is Tiger in some respects the new Grand Prix? I mean I feel like this is uh, Groundhog Day that we're just having this argument over and over again every time the state spends any money on anything we, we question whether it should happen. Well I think you look at the, the world swimming titles they spent well more than 10 million on that. I'm, I think Jeff Kennett started this it helped get Victoria moving again you know proud to be Victoria all these tourism events but it's just been overdone. I mean the Grand Prix now is up 30 40 million a year it costs it's meant to run at a profit and break even if you believe Ron Walker and then, um, you know, Brumby just wants to keep up with this thing that Kenneth started, when I think it's, it's like overdone. But it works, though. I mean, you have a look at the amount of money Australia spends on these disastrous tourism campaigns. This might be a fraction of that cost, yet it still works. Well, when you've already got, you know, the Melbourne Cup, the Grand Final, the Australian Open Tennis, you've already got a wonderful calendar of events. Now, do you really need to, you know, add to it with these, you know, swimming marginal events, or in the case of Tiger, you know, one player? I would, yes, last year was fine, worked really well, but I just think this time it's, it's an overreach and they've blown it. If, if these events are so successful in making money, uh, then why does the government need to subsidise it? Where is the, uh, why is this money not coming from the private sector? Who, who is actually making money? That's what I'd like to know. Who is actually making the cash out of these events that the government, or eventually the taxpayer, is actually investing in? You've got to realise that there are other cities in the Asia-Pacific region that would pay much, much more to have these events. So, in a sense, we do have to um, subsidise them to one extent or another. But one of the, those cities that you talk about is Singapore that mm. seem to want our Grand Prix very much, and I think a lot of people are getting to the point that say, here, have it. Uh, should we be allowing Singapore to take over from Melbourne's reputation? Though? No, we shouldn't because it's one of the things that puts us on the map. I mean, we have to pedal a lot harder here in Melbourne than other cities do, like uh, Sydney and Brisbane, because we don't have the weather, we don't have the beaches. In a sense, the major events are our Sydney Harbour Bridge. But how far do we go? Look, there's no point where you say X is this far, but um, I think so far we've done well. We have to refresh the major events calendar every year. We can't just have the same thing every year. We've got to have new events. Um, and I think we're doing fairly well. Just concentrate on getting the World Cup 2022 and make sure the final is hosted in Melbourne. Focus on the big picture. Not